is uh, Alain. I'm here today to talk about post-purpose. What happens when companies go beyond purpose and discover the power of obsession? Uh, just by way of introduction, just so you know a little bit of, about who I am, I, uh, I'm the CEO of a company called Sylvain. It's a strategy and design consultancy. We really help companies think about the future of their products and their brands. Um, you can check us out at sylvain.co if you want to learn more. We work with a lot of different companies in a lot of different categories, um, but when it comes to purpose, we've actually learned quite a lot um, because of some of our work with Patagonia and some of our work with, with BlackRock and others that sort of led that led that conversation. And one thing I don't need to tell you, one thing we all know, um, is that the world of business is drunk on this notion of purpose. They're obsessed. It's become part of like business popular culture. It's, the, it's, it's a trend, you might say. It's one of the biggest news stories within the last couple of years, this idea of companies having a purpose. Um, but purpose, if you really define the, the term and you look into what it means, purpose actually means the reason for which something is done or created, or for which something exists. Sometimes that term gets bastardized and people talk about it as um, social good or social impact or social responsibility, when really all that it really means is having a reason to exist. Um, but nevertheless, there are companies that are famous for putting their purpose to work. And Patagonia, of course, is the poster child for this. For several years, they've become known for all their great purpose-driven initiatives and marketing. Um, so much so that it's, you know, people kind of roll their eyes a little bit when you talk about Patagonia in the context of purpose. They're like, you know, they, you constantly hear about it and it's, it's, they're viewed as this kind of super virtuous organization. But, it, you know, rightfully, rightfully so. It's a privately owned for-profit organization. They're obsessed with preserving the natural world. They do a bunch of really bold moves. Um, you know, like famously in 2011, they said on Black Friday not to buy this jacket. They actually use this, the height of consumer, uh, the consumer movement and the consumer moment and told people not to go out and buy stuff. And they did it something similar again in 2016 when they, after Trump got elected, where they um, said that they would donate their profits to good causes. And of course, they generate a lot of attention for that. All of these kind of bold moves over the years has been quite good for business for Patagonia. They're now a, a over a billion dollar company um, and they're making money sort of hand over fist. So there's a correlation, of course, between purpose and their growth. Um, it has a lot to do with how they conduct business and, and, and what they value as an organization. As an employer, they're kind of incredible. There's only a 4% employee turnover rate at, um, at Patagonia compared to the U.S. rate average of like 12 to 15% or 10.9% or globally. 4% of employees stick around because they love um, Patagonia as an employer. Or how about with, with working moms? So 100% of retention rate with working moms. They stick around. They, it really says something to how Patagonia treats its employees and the values that they hold dear. Um, so everyone has noticed this purpose-driven success, and it's sort of we've become obsessed with this notion of purpose to the point where it's, it's a little bit of a commodity. There's this kind of understanding that all companies need to make sure they do the work and fill out the, the paperwork or, or make this, the cute statement, the pithy line, or like, this is our purpose. We get asked that question a lot by companies like, help us define our purpose. And it's, it's almost to the fact that you're losing sight of the fact that a purpose is actually meant to channel the inner soul of an organization. Um, can you, should you treat it like a commodity? Nevertheless, you know, there's so many pretty profound movements across the world of business that we've seen in the last couple of years. There's the business roundtable that was uh, signed uh, by a number of big corporations. Certified B Corps, of course, are bigger than ever. 3,500 uh, B Corps now versus, you know, 1,000 or 1,500 a few years ago. Um, all of these kind of, this attention to purpose and this kind of drive for purpose has kind of created something that I call the purpose industrial complex. It's this sort it's a strategic relationship between companies, consultancies, nonprofits, and governments that builds appealing and profitable commercial brands through culturally relevant media narratives. It's a, it's a, it's this kind of it's like the it's like the candy for the world of business where you talk about a purpose like it's bigger than anything else and it's a really romantic story. All you need to do is watch the commercials at the Super Bowl and you'll see that trend um, carry through commercial after commercial. And it's, it's hyped up, you know, purpose is everywhere. There are books written about, there are articles written about. It's, it's really talking about how to weave that into, into business, um, rightfully so. 
And actually, if you look at a bunch of different platforms, you know, you'll, you'll see what I mean. If you look on Amazon, you search the world, the word of business, you'll see that there are thousands and thousands of books written on purpose, whether you're talking about self-help or you're talking about corporate purpose. Or you look on, um, you know, Clubhouse. Right now, there are probably dozens of uh, rooms uh, uh, blazing talking about purpose. And of course, you know, this new title, Chief Purpose Officer, has emerged out of nowhere. There's 649,000 Chief Purpose Officers on LinkedIn. What? That's a lot of Chief Purpose Officers. Um, there's a lot of hype around purpose, and it reminds me of the self-help gurus like Tony Robbins. That really, this notion of purpose and corporate purpose is not unlike him telling you on a personal level, if you can't, you must. If you must, you can. It's about unlocking your potential and who you are and really channeling what you're meant to do in this world. Um, and there, there's a racket out there. There come consultancies going around talking about it like crazy. I'm guilty of it. I, I have to admit, I'm doing it now. I've done it in other places. You know, it's, it's people want to hear it. The world wants to hear talk about corporate purpose and what the objective is. For good reason. Um, consumers want to hear it. 70% uh, of Gen Z and millennials believe a brand should have a purpose they personally believe in. There's a commercial correlation to purpose. It's more than just about the soul of an organization. It's actually about revenue. And that's the reason uh, after, in the midst of 2020, in the height of all the, the crises that we were going through around um, you know, the racial, quote unquote, social reckoning around race or COVID-19 or anti-Asian violence, you're seeing companies actually making statements. And, and the Black Square on Black Square Tuesday or Wednesday or whatever it was, was interesting. It was companies made, these, made a statement um, by putting up a Black Square and saying that we stand um, you know, against police brutality and systemic racism. Um, but the very next day they would post like, here, you know, buy our new jacket. And so the context was always really confusing. And it's become a little bit of a meme, this idea of the super righteous company. You know, there, I don't know if you know who did this, but there's this great meme out there that, that writes a fake manifesto or a fake social post on the part of a generic brand. You know, you know, we at Brand X are committed to fighting injustice by posting images to Twitter that express our commitment to fighting injustice. Um, and it, you know, it could be any brand that says that because everyone's got this air of, of righteousness. Even the brands we love are, are, are sort of positioning themselves as better than and really mindful of the ills of society. You know, Apple with their new release, their iOS release, are really owning this idea of privacy. They're among the better tech companies that, 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 um, that operate in that way. 53% um, of consumers think brands trust wash or aren't as committed to helping society as they claim. So in spite of all these companies put, you know, doing all this work to get all this attention and to stand for something greater than they are and perhaps something more socially minded, 53% of consumers think brands are just bullshitting them. They think it's just, they're, they're, it's just a marketing ploy. They see right through it. Half of all consumers don't, don't buy into it. Even the brands we love, again, you, know, you think about the, the, the famous sponsorship of Colin Kaepernick on the part of Nike. 60% of survey participants felt positively about Nike after viewing the ad. It's, it's higher than 50, you know, it's a significant amount, felt good about it. Uh, but of that group, 45% thought Nike was genuinely, uh, was committed to racial justice. You know, less than half actually believed that this was, in fact, a, a valid commitment. So what was it then in, in their eyes? In their eyes, it was more of a gratuitous marketing moment. But purpose still matters. Don't get me wrong, purpose still matters. Um, we've just made it a little bit of a rhetorical exercise. 82% of people felt it was important for their companies to have a purpose, but only 42% felt their company's purpose statement had any impact. That's pretty interesting. You know, you want your company to stand for something, and the things that they're standing for don't, don't seem valid or don't have any real impact. That's a real disconnect. And there's, and there's more. 94% of consumers believe the companies they engage with should have a strong purpose. 94% believe their employers should have a purpose. 83% of consumers said companies should only earn a profit if they also deliver a positive impact. So consumers, employees, have an expectation that companies should do better. And talking about it or advertising about it isn't enough. So where does purpose fall short? In my mind, it's not about purpose. It's actually not about the purpose itself, especially if you consider that all companies should have a purpose to be um, profitable. It's actually about obsession. Oftentimes, obsession is this kind of taboo word, but if you had a collective obsession at an organizational level about your organization, about your, the reason you exist, it would be kind of remarkable. It makes me think of Dyson and James Dyson and the way 
you know, that, that organization's obsession with what they were doing and, and, and the amount of patents and the studying that they went through to really achieve this kind of perfect product. What if you brought purpose and obsession together? Um, you know, you'd have to be mindful of the fact that the word obsession has traps, you know, it's, it's taboo. You know, a lot of people think it's a little crazy. And pop, the portrayal in pop culture is, is such that it's, it's kind of bananas or, or, you know, OCD, of course, has the word obses obsessive in it. Um, and that a lot of people think that's an illness um, or a disorder. Of course, OCD is a disorder. Um, but the power of obsession, you know, the, with purpose, okay, the power of purpose and obsession is actually pretty, pretty great. Purpose alone, without obsession, is a little hollow. You know, so many of the great inventions of our time came from a ruthless alchemy of purpose and obsession, if I could say that. You know, Thomas Edison and the invention of the light bulb, you know, putting humans on the moon, or you know, decoding the genetic genome, the, the genome, is all came from an obsession, a, 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 a not not only the belief that we need to achieve this thing, but a ruthless obsession at achieving that thing, and that's why it's not just about purpose to me, corporate purpose. It's actually about purposeful obsession, an idea or thought that ruthlessly preoccupies the mind in service of a grand vision or ambitious goal, because purpose alone falls short. Purposeful obsession is a little bit more interesting. Which takes me to this quote, and, I, and, I, and this is such a fascinating quote. It's actually about the human mind that was in psychology today many years ago. When you obsess, you learn how to extinguish distractions so that you can concentrate. You accept the hard existential fact that if you intend to matter, you must act as if you matter. You retrain your brain, asking, if it, asking it to halt its pursuit of fluff and worry to instead embrace its own potential. On a human level, the, word, the obsession is actually kind of healthy. But imagine looking at this quote through the lens of a corporation. And, 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 and actually, let's talk about it through the lens of Patagonia. Because the reason Patagonia is interesting is not because it's purpose-driven. The reason Patagonia is interesting is because it's purpose-obsessed. It's purpose-obsessed. Um, so I'll, give you, I'll, give you, I'll explain what I mean. So when you obsess, you learn how to extinguish distractions so that you can concentrate. Um, and so, you know, Yvonne Chouinard, the founder of Patagonia, is a great example of that. He said, our intent is to remain a closely held private company so we can continue to focus on our bottom line doing good. So he's not interested in, in selling the company. They're not looking at other possibilities for the, in, the, in the corporation. They're solely obsessed with this idea of doing good. And that um, removal of distraction actually helps them achieve their end. The second part of the sentence, you accept the hard existential fact that if you intend to matter, you must act as if you matter. So because Patagonia has the commitment to do that good, they've made decisions. They've made decisions to, in their practices to actually do good. So forget the end product. It's through things like supply chain and, and fair trade or through the, the self-imposed earth tax. They, they, they impose a 1% tax on themselves since 1985 um, to, to go to, 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 to donate money to uh, natural causes. Or the fact that they, they put this in their, in their clothes, you know, vote the assholes out in 2017 as a response to the Trump era politics of the time. Um, how about the third part of the sentence? You retrain your brain, asking it to halt its pursuit of fluff and worry to instead embrace its own potential. You know, when we worked with them many, many years ago, it was crazy. If, if at a certain time there was a, a swell um, in the ocean, and you worked at Patagonia, you were expected to go out and surf. Uh, we have a policy that when the surf comes up, you drop work and you go surfing. I don't care when, you're work, uh, when you work as long as the job gets done. Um, this idea of you know, ignoring fluff and worry and really appreciating what's important is kind of key. So again, if you look at this quote that's meant to be about the human mind, but you put it in the context of corporate purpose, I think it says something else about what the potential of purpose can be. When you obsess, you learn, how to ex you learn how to extinguish distractions so that you can concentrate. Imagine a company concentrating on one thing. You accept the hard existential fact that if you intend to matter, you must act as if you matter. Can companies act as if they matter? You retrain your brain, asking it to halt its purpose of fluff and worry to instead embrace its own potential. So my question to you is, how do you ignite your organization's purposeful obsession? How does that happen? How, how, if you buy into this argument, how does it, on an organization level, how do you do that? And, and I argue that there are five pathways to purposeful obsession. One, insatiable curiosity. In order to achieve purposeful obsession, you need to be curious about the world. You need to be open-minded. It's a deeply personal behavior, and you can see that on, on a corporate level. 
companies like Lego are so interesting because they sort of truly emp empower the organization to prioritize um, curiosity, uh, insatiable curiosity. You know, I see the world in rectangles. If I'm talking to someone, I find myself analyzing their face, working out how to recreate it in bricks. Or Google, you know, with their famous experiments and their 80-20 rule and all of that, where they invite experimenters and coders and others to continually inspire new products and more experimentation so they can showcase it. Um, that culture of curiosity is very deep at Google. Or how about unwavering belief? This kind of steadfast commitment to not be afraid to stand alone for something. That's how you become purposefully obsessed. Um, you know, Chanel is a great example. There's a, another client of ours that they're unwavering in their belief in, in that their store experience needs to be incredibly valuable. valuable. They've actually decided to be a totally in-store luxury experience and haven't ventured to the digital um, you know, landscape as many as their competitors have. Or, or they've also committed to, their, to femininity and, and committed to not making things for men, uh, a menswear line. Um, so three, audacious, audacious vision. That's actually key too, um, where you can see the big picture and you see you, you, have, you have a vision that is greater than any fear and that you've, you're not willing to put a, a stake in the ground on where you want to go. You know, Tesla famously has their master plan where with bold clarity they outline what they're doing. Build a sports car, use that money to build an affordable car, etc. Or Larry Fink in his annual letter to CEOs, um, you know, BlackRock is famous for their work around purpose, where every year he states what he thinks is important, what all CEOs should know. And, and most recently it was about uh, net zero um, and carbon uh, impact. Next up is an immersive flow, um, creating a space where an organization can really be singularly focused on one thing. You know, uh, Bill Gates famously goes away once a year. He calls it Think Week, and all he does is read and write papers and reviews the uh, pitches on the part of Microsoft to decide what they're actually going to make. Um, that moment of immersive flow can only happen when you're sort of removed uh, because distraction is the enemy of vision. Uh, it's a pretty profound statement. You think a, a, a famous philosopher said it, but it was Kanye, who might be a famous philosopher, but he did say that. Distraction is the enemy of vision. Um, and last, contagious energy. In order for your, uh, your purposeful obsession to truly travel throughout the organization, it needs to, there needs to be an inclination to evangelize it in and of itself. Um, you know, Krispy Kreme, the, the donut company, famously does this through um, growing their brand through word of mouth and not through traditional means of marketing. At best, when your purpose and your obsession are disjointed, your vision can be a house of cards. At worst, it can actually get perverted. Um, you know, this is famous case of, of WeWork, um, where their purpose and obsession weren't exactly aligned. Um, their purpose was, was about creating a place where people make a life, that's what they said, which is a really ambitious kind of notion, but their obsession was actually probably in being a tech company or being a real estate company. Those things were not aligned and the company lost you know, $1.25 billion in just three months in, in, in the year 2019. But when your purpose and your obsession are actually aligned, um, they empower you to shape the future by sheer will. Um, you know, and that's what, this is when I talk about Impossible Foods, really interesting company where they really align the two. We wanted to understand meat precisely in molecular terms and what gives rise to all those sensory characteristics that consumers value, and then use that to make our own meat. Their purpose was to reduce impact on the environment by replacing the use of animals as food. Their obsession was understanding all things meat to replicate it. They studied meat at a molecular level, and the company is growing rapidly and widely loved. You know, they're expected to be worth over $6 billion by the year 2023. Or, you know, there's another great example of um, the zero waste Daniel, the, the fashion line, where the founder, Daniel, is obsessed with sending nothing to landfills, to making a, a fashion brand where everything is one of a kind from scrap materials. That obsession is actually pretty powerful. So, so my question to you is, how will you free your own purposeful obsession? What is your purposeful obsession? How can you free it? And how can you put these pathways to work for you? Insatiable curiosity, unwavering belief, audacious vision, immersive flow, and contagious energy. Uh, my name is Alain. Check us out at sylvain.co, and I hope you have a great time at the rest of the conference.